Hello, Sylvia Earle. Very nice to be here. Yeah, and it's such you. a pleasure <laughs> to have you here. Yours is just an incredible story to tell. Uh, you've been a sea explorer for 60 years and a pioneer as a woman. You've lived your passion for the ocean throughout your life. You've actually lived on the water for two weeks. I don't know, I've done it ten times. <laughs> ten times? <laughs> <laughs> Which is just a glimpse when you think how readily people can spend days, weeks, months, years working on the land in places that they want to study. But having 24 hours underwater is a big deal, let alone two weeks. So, you know, it's, it's a wonder we know as much about the ocean as we do, given the limitations of actually getting down yes. and staying in the ocean for meaningful periods of time. How does it feel like? feels like more, always. <laughs> a little bit is <laughs> great, more is better, mm, but it's always too short. I guess so. And, and we, we need to go deep. The average depth of the ocean is 4,000 meters, and we're up here, I like know. 50 meters. Mm. And then the maximum, 11,000 meters, so most of the ocean has never been seen by anyone let yes. alone explored. That's, that's why, most that's of our planet. I, yeah, that's why I read. <laughs> it's where most of life yeah. on Earth actually exists. And we look up here for other forms of life somewhere out there, but here we've got a whole ocean filled with creatures and we barely know their names. We know how good they taste, though. Yes, we do. <laughs> so I read, indeed, that 70% of Earth is actually water, ocean. But just, the, just the surface. Yes. Remember, three dimensions. And 80% of the ocean is unexplored, or something right. like that. And oh. we think we actually own the place. <laughs> <laughs> the fish and whales and shrimp think otherwise. Yeah, <laughs> They I think we're so. the aliens <laughs> invading their home. So how did it all start for you? Hmm? This passion for the ocean, how hmm. did it all start? Well, as a child I got knocked over by a wave and the ocean got my attention. <laughs> but it's life in the ocean that has held my attention and keeps it there all the time. You never know what you're going to see, but you know it's going to be great, good, <laughs> fascinating. The ocean is unpredictable? Life is unpredictable, wherever you are. <laughs> That's true. Has it ever been an obstacle to be a woman in this field? Well, it's been considered mostly a man's world, whether you're on the surface, on ships, women were considered bad luck when I first began exploring the ocean. Um, bad luck to be on a ship. Yes. And most of those who went under the sea were men, but that's changed a lot. And yeah. when, during the first experience living underwater, the head of the program had to decide whether or not to accept women and he famously said, well, half the fish are female, <laughs> half the dolphins, half the whales. Maybe we can put up with a few women in this experiment living underwater. And the uh, numbers of, of humans in the sea, those who are choosing science, marine biology, oceanography as a lifetime pursuit, the number of women greatly increasing, which is terrific. Even captains of ships, that used to be, I mean, almost what was unheard of. Yeah. If a woman aboard the ship was usually the captain's wife, or there was a, somebody to look after the, the men as a cook or something, but today... Like the wife of Captain Cousteau, perhaps. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I can imagine. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but today it has changed, luckily. It, it yeah. is changing. It's by no means half and half, but it's there to be done. It's not a matter of confidence, it's a matter of will. You say something very strong, no ocean, no life. Right, take away the ocean, you've got Mars. Can you no. just remind us why the ocean is so important in the Earth balance itself? Well, there are a lot of things that have come into focus during the time that I've been exploring and understanding the ocean. I mean, we learned so much during the 20th century and now into the 21st. We now know 
That's, of course, where most of the water on Earth is. It's yes. 97 percent of Earth's water is ocean. And that's fundamental because life as we know it requires water. It's a single thing life must have. Mm. <laughs> and the temperature of the planet is regulated, governed by the ocean. It, it takes up and stores heat and holds it much more effectively than the air. Yeah. And the currents sweeping around the planet distribute warm and cold wherever <laughs> they are flowing. Yeah. Most of the oxygen in the atmosphere is generated by that organisms is. in the sea. The history of life on Earth is there in the ocean. It's the greatest diversity of life, greatest abundance of life, greatest mass of life. Mm -hmm. if, if you were an alien looking to find life on Earth, you'd start with the ocean because that's where the action is. But we, as terrestrial creatures, are just beginning to appreciate that the ocean shapes climate, shapes weather. No ocean, no climate, no weather, no life, no us. And no ocean, no history as well. That's, that's where we're born. So That's where and life appears to have originated. Yeah. And before photosynthesis, before that process whereby green creatures generate oxygen and take up carbon dioxide, there was life on Earth, but not life as we know it today, although there are chemosynthetic bacteria that get their nutrition from rocks and water. And here we are, four and a half billion years after that big blob of molten rock that was the early Earth. A planet that works in our favor. It's taking us about four and a half decades to significantly cause a decline of those basic systems that make our lives possible. But we couldn't see it when I was a child, could not see that we were or could do harm. Yes. The ocean seemed the logical place to throw things away. And we thought that we couldn't deplete fish from the sea, or even if we did, it didn't matter. Uh, but the thought was, I remember hearing people say, well, if we killed all the whales, what difference would it make? I mean, what difference it would make, aside from the moral question of do we have the right just to go out there just and kill the right everything? To do it, yeah. Um, whales have a role, just as all organisms on Earth have a place in the scheme of what holds the planet steady. We have lo lost a great many of the pieces of the fabric of life that was there when I was a child. But the good news is there are more whales today than there were when I was a kid because we've stopped killing them. Yeah. There are more sea turtles, too, than when I was a child, because we look at turtles as something more than pieces of meat. Of course. These are amazing animals, and we should respect them for every wonderful thing they are. So it's not too late. Like you said in your speech, we didn't know back then no. the harm we were doing to the Earth. Right. We know now. So there's no excuse. There's no excuse, and there's only actions that we can take. What can we actually do? What, what should we focus on in priority, according to you? Well, there's some categories, such as we have policies about migrating birds. Yes. We have policies about not killing whales and sea turtles, but we need a lot more of for the land mm -hmm. and for the ocean. Our large areas where we don't kill anything yes. deliberately. I mean, we kill a lot of things inadvertently because of what we're putting into the air, yes. what we're putting into the ocean. But to say these are safe havens, these are areas of restoration, this is our life support system too. And the more of that we can do, the better the chance not only will the fish and whales and turtles have, but the better chance we'll have too. Yes. I know it's often considered radical the fight for the environment. Measures are really not that popular because we have to change radically. Is there any other well, no, way? It, you know, it's, it seemed a luxury 
like, these are beautiful places. I'm a tree hugger. I like birds. But no, now we know that our existence is reliant on holding steady the fabric of life, holding the chemistry of the planet, which is reliant on the fabric of life, the temperature. We're changing all of these things, and it's, <laughs> it really isn't because you're, you know, I mean, maybe the reason for doing it is because you do love whales and you do love trees and birds, and that's okay, but it's loving humankind, loving our existence, knowing that if we destroy them, we destroy ourselves, and we have done a pretty good job of destroying much that we really need to restore if we are to have a chance of a long and prosperous future. And you look up in the sky and you see beautiful places out there, but none of them that we know about, or even within our reach, even if we found a place somewhere out there, how are we going to take life as we know it and transport it? Our history, our roots, our chemistry is linked to this planet. It's our home. We should do everything as the highest priority to keep the world safe for the children coming along and for ourselves right now. It should be number one on our list of, to do things. How can I make the world safe? That means air to breathe, water to drink, the wild creatures, the natural systems that give us the things that we heretofore have taken for granted. Yeah, we do. You've seen changes on the yeah. water. Do you think that could be the key? Do you think we need to make everyone take a deeper dive and just watch it by themselves? It's important because if you don't know, you can't care. You can know and not care. And there's a lot of that going around. But you can't really, if, if you don't, know why the ocean matters if you've never seen a fish other than on your plate or maybe in an aquarium somewhere if, if you haven't seen the reality of what the ocean is or why caring for it means caring for us it's hard to be motivated to do what it takes to maintain the planet that works in our favor. But the evidence is all around. I mean, it's great. It's really important, I think, for anyone who can put on a face mask, jump in the ocean, look around, get a submarine if you can, go deep and look around, whatever it takes. But don't deprive yourself of getting to know your planet in every way you can. Read uh, the videos that are out there that didn't exist and could not exist until right about now with techniques that now enable us to at least get a glimpse of what's in the deep sea and to share it with everyone. Things that I used to read about as a kid but nobody took pictures. They just made paintings to depict what was in the ocean. Well, now we have great ways and means, even though much of the ocean has not been seen or explored, we are at this beginning phase of exploration, maybe the greatest era of exploration ever, and everyone should jump in and enjoy being a part of the action. We shall conclude to that. Let's all be explorers then. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. See you underwater, right? Definitely. <laughs>